Hi, I'm Randy Becker with Keysight Technologies, and today I'd like to give you a quick overview of our 5G test bed. To start with, we have our new VXG signal generator. It's a microwave signal generator with frequency coverage up to 44 gigahertz. You'll also notice here that it has two channels, so both channels go to 44 gigahertz, each of them 2 gigahertz of bandwidth. They also can have high power options, low phase and low phase noise for doing 5G work. They can also be phase coherent for testing phased array chipsets, and it's also used for, gen for generating a wanted signal in the presence of an unwanted interfere that might be of a different modulation type at a different frequency and power level. In this application, we're going to use them to generate a 2x2 two two MIMO spatially multiplex signal for testing our device under test. The two outputs are fed into our two probe antennas, which are cross-polarized, one horizontal and one vertical. Our device under test in this configuration is a uh, phased array antenna, an 8x8 phased array antenna that's also cross-polarized. And we're going to make some measurements and see how well it's performing. The output of the phased array is also at 28 gigahertz. I forgot to mention that we're doing this at uh, 28 gigahertz, which is in the FR2 band for a uh, new radio. The output of the phased array is at 28 gigahertz and is being fed into our UXR Infinium scope. Now, normally you'd think of a scope as not uh, something that you use to make a uh, uh, frequency domain or, or a demodulation analysis, but because this scope is so high performance, we're able to make uh, a number of different measurements. The sample rate of the scope is uh, 256 giga samples per second, so it's extremely high uh, sample rate, giving us a instantaneous bandwidth of 110 uh, gigahertz. So from 0 to 110 gigahertz, we can instantaneously uh, acquire that in a single acquisition. The scope also has a 10-bit analog to digital converter, giving us near spectrum analyzer-like dynamic range and demodulation uh, results. So now we'll look at some of the results. We're actually running our VSA software inside the Infinium scope. I have it shown here on a separate monitor. Uh, to start with, you can see the spectrum. So I have uh, two colors here that you can see in the spectrum, a, a light blue and a dark green. Those represent uh, the uh, signals from channel 1 and channel 2. And uh, over here you'll see that uh, the light blue is a little lower power level. That's because we're actually not transmitting anything on one channel. We're seeing the cross-pole uh, leakage. Below that, we see uh, the constellation diagrams for layer one and layer two. And if I put my hand in front of one of these, you'll notice that uh, the signal goes away. And actually, you'll see it goes away just on uh, that layer, but we're still able to demodulate the other layer. Over here, you also see the uh, detected allocation. So this is showing us how the signal's laid out in time and frequency. The colors represent the different channels in the new radio signal. So down here, I have a 16 QAM user. Up here in the middle, I have the broadcast and synchronization channels. Here, I have a 64 QAM user. And at the very top of the spectrum, a 256 QAM user. And you can see that represented in the different uh, constellations. So you see this one's very dense. This is because it has the 256 QAM. This one's a bit less dense because we only have a 16 QAM uh, user configured there. On the far upper right, we have the demodulation results. And you see the different colors. The different colors uh, are color coordinated across the different displays. So for example, I can see I have the primary and secondary sync channels, the broadcast channel, and the different uh, downlink uh, shared channels. I can see their particular EVM and channel power, and it also tells me the modulation type. So when I look at this one, I can see that it's orange, and I can look at that orange over there and see that in fact it is 16 QAM. We also have some MIMO demodulation results and also the uh, raw decoded uh, symbol data uh, available for further analysis. In the middle part of the screen, you see an interesting uh, display. This is actually our uh, 3D view of the uh, uh, subcarrier power over time and uh, frequency. So let me make that a little bit bigger so we can see it in, in uh, more detail. So I can rotate this around and view the signal from uh, uh, any orientation that I want. So I can see the 16 QAM user over here appears to be at a little lower power level than the 256 QAM user, 
and that the broadcast channels are transmitted with a simpler modulation because it's just one plane. So I know that that's either QPSK or BPSK modulation. Uh, while there's many more layers, power levels associated with the 256 QAM user. That's why we have so many levels here. But I can zoom in and uh, actually investigate any individual uh, subcarrier symbol that may be of interest. And here you'll notice that it looks like the uh, broadcast channel has a little bit of slope to it, and that might be due to the propagation over the air. Normally we should be doing this in a uh, uh, chamber to make a you know, proper metrology grade uh, calibrated measurement. So we might be getting some effect going over the air or it might be the device under test. But these are the types of tools you would use to analyze and dig in and uh, figure out exactly what's going on. So I can cl uh, click that X and bring this back into my uh, display. So I have full control over the uh, parameters and the different measurements that I'm making and how I have these windows organized. I organized this uh, in a way that was convenient for me, but you could choose to move these around and uh, uh, make them bigger and smaller depending upon uh, what you're trying to, uh, to look at. And now we'll finish by going to this third monitor. This is actually also running inside the uh, UXR, but shown on a third monitor here. And, uh, let me resume the demo. I actually have our PathWave test connected to the instruments and our device under test. And you'll notice that the antenna positioner is now moving. So we're moving the antenna positioner. And while we're doing that, we're also electrically steering the beam back to the probe antenna. So this will give us an idea of how well the uh, uh, device under test is performing over a range of different uh, mechanical and electrical uh, beam positions. So we're collecting uh, all of that data and below here you can see some plots uh, representing some different things that are pretty interesting. So to start with, uh, this upper plot is showing us the actual antenna pattern from our phased array. So here you see the main lobes and you see a number of the different side lobes below there. And this bottom trace is a little bit different. It looks a little more boring actually, but gives us some very important information. So what we do in this case is we uh, mechanically move the array to a certain position and then steer the beam electrically back to the probe antenna. And we do that over the full scan volume. And this gives us an idea of how the power varies as we're moving that beam around. So you could imagine that a user we might want to be able to track in 3D space. And if we move the beam to a certain location, we don't want to see that power going up and down. We want to see that the power is constant no matter where we're pointing that beam. And so here you see more or less a flat surface indicating that, okay, as we move the beam over that uh, 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 3D space that we are seeing that the power is remaining relatively constant. So these are a few of the different things that we can measure with our 5G testbed. If you have any questions, contact keysight.com. Thanks for watching.